talk about taking the equation of an ellipse that is written in general form and transforming it into the very useful standard form so that you could find its graph. So let me remind you that in general form, an e the equation of an ellipse could look like this, with A and C having the same sign. If they had different signs, we would be talking about a hyperbola. But for it to be an ellipse, the equation would look something like this, with these two having the same sign. And when we write it in standard form, notice we have these nice perfect squares in the numerator. The center is HK in both of these cases. And if you look at it, they, at first glance, these look the same. But notice here on the left, the A squared is in the denominator of our first term. And here the A squared is in the denominator of the second one. And that's because the A squared is always the larger of the two denominators when we're talking about an ellipse. So it may be underneath the x squared, or it may be underneath the y squared. And the relationship between a's, b's, and c's in an ellipse is this. So let's jump in and do a problem. So here it is. This is the equation of our ellipse. Notice these two terms have the same sign. So our job is to write it in standard form, make it look like this. That means we need to complete the square with, both, with respect to both x and y. So let's do that. That means we're going to put the terms that contain the x together. So I have a 9x squared plus 9dx. And we're going to put the terms together that have y's in them. So I have plus 16y squared minus 32y. And I'm going to subtract 97. Just get it out of the way so I can complete the square easily with respect to x and y. But remember when we complete the square, we want the coefficient of the quadratic term to be 1. So we're going to factor out the 9. So it looks like this. And here we'll factor out 16. And notice I'm leaving some space because we need to put in the number that will complete the square. Now notice within the parentheses that coefficient of the x squared is a 1. So let's do our completing the square. We'll take half of 10, half of 10 is five, five squared is 25, so we need a 25 right here. And of course, to balance the fact that we added this number to the left-hand side, we need to add the same number to the right side. But notice this is not really a 25, it's 25 that's being multiplied by nine. So that's actually nine times 25, which is 225. So we need to add 225 to the right side as well. For this term right here, we need to take half of negative 2. That's negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, so we need a 1 here. But that's not really a 1. That's a 1 being multiplied by 16. So we have just added 16 to the left-hand side, so we need to add 16 to the right-hand side as well. So we can write this, this trinomial as this binomial squared. It is x plus 5 squared, and that was the point. We wanted to write that as a perfect square, plus 16 times y minus 1 squared equals, and then we can do the arithmetic on this side. We have 225 plus 16, that's 241. Subtract 97, and we have 144. But remember, in standard form, let me bring this back, we need a 1 on this side. So we're going to divide by 144. And when we do that, we have... 
x plus 5 squared over 16. Right? 9 goes into 144 16 times. And similarly here, 16 goes into 144 9 times. And we have our equation in standard form. Now let's just continue so we can have practice graphing and stating the coordinates of the foci. So let's move to our next piece of paper here. We'll just slide this up. There we go. So we're going to graph that equation. Let's see, notice our center will be at negative 5, 1. So here's our graph. Negative 5, negative 5 right here, 1 here. Here's our center. And under the x, it will tell me how far to go in the x direction. Remember, you're going to take the square root of this number. So from here, from center, I will go 4 in each direction. 1, 2, 3, 4. That puts one vertex of my ellipse here at negative 1 and 4 this direction. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right here at negative 9. I look under the y to see how far to go in the y direction. Take the square root of this number, that's 3. So from here I go up 3. 1, 2, 3. So I would be up here at 4 and down 3. 1, 2, 3. Oops, I'm squishing all over that number that's negative 5. And I'm down at a negative 2. And I do my best to draw an ellipse through those points. I missed it by a fair amount right here. It might have been nice to do this on graph paper. But here's a rough sketch of my ellipse. Now our foci are always on our major axis. Our major axis, remember, is this axis right here. Our minor axis is the smaller of the two. So I know my foci are here and here somewhere. I just don't know how far from center they are. Well, to find them, we know it's a squared minus b squared equals c squared. a squared is the larger of the two denominators, so a squared is 16. b squared is the smaller denominator. And I solve this equation, and I have a value for c. We get c equals plus or minus the square root of 7. So we move from center, we move square root of 7 units this way and square root of 7 units this way. This point right here, remember, was the point negative 5, 1. If we move right square root of 7, we would add square root of 7 to negative 5. So our foci, oh, let me write that a little better would be at negative 5 plus square root of 7, 1. That would be this point right here. And from center, I would move left square root of 7. So negative 5 minus square root of 7, comma, 1 as well.